The NFT industry is blowing up and there is a huge opportunity for developers who specialize in this niche. But NFTs are built on top of many other technologies and it can be very intimidating for beginners. Where to get started and what do you need to learn to become an NFT developer? That's what we will see in this video. If you don't know me, I'm Julian. I'm a professional blockchain developer. I've been in the industry since 2017 and on Edo Blocks, I teach blockchain development. Let's do some reverse engineering. We are going to start from the top of the stack and go down. NFTs represent digital ownership of a unique item. This unique item can represent very different things like digital art or in-game assets. But no matter which type of NFTs we are dealing with, there are usually two parts in an NFT. One part is on the blockchain and another part is outside. We don't put everything on the blockchain because storing data on the blockchain is expensive. The part of the NFT that is on the blockchain represents the ownership of the NFT. Each NFT has a single owner represented by an address. And the part of the NFT outside of the blockchain is a server that stores the metadata of the NFT, including the associated image of the NFT. So we have two parts in NFTs, but what does it mean in terms of what you need to learn to be able to build this NFT? First, you need to learn NFT development. NFTs follow some standards both for the on-chain part and off-chain part. So you will need to learn these standards. Then you need to learn blockchain development. The on-chain part of NFTs are smart contracts on the blockchain, so you will need to create these smart contracts. And finally, you need to learn web development. There are two reasons for this. First, the off-chain part of NFTs is on the web server. And second, blockchain technology is built on web technologies, so you won't be able to learn blockchain development if you don't already know web development. So now you have a complete plan. Let's see in details what you have to learn for each part. The first step in your NFT journey is to learn web development. Don't skip this step, it's very important. If you don't know web development, you will really struggle for the next part of your learning, which is blockchain and NFT development. Web development is huge. You have many languages, many frameworks, etc. You don't need to know all of them. In web development, there are two parts, front-end and back-end. For the back-end, you will need to learn Node.js, which is JavaScript server-side. You will also need to learn how to use NPM, the package manager of Node.js. Pretty much all the development tools for blockchain development use Node.js and NPM, so it's very important to be comfortable there. You will also need to learn how to build a simple server that can serve JSON documents and images. For this, you can use a web framework like Express. You will also need to learn how to deploy this server. There are many ways to deploy a server, but I recommend to use something simple like Heroku. With just a few comments, you can deploy your backend and you don't need to manage the low-level details of your server. So that's a huge time saving. There are many other things to learn for backend development like MVC frameworks, databases, etc. But if you are just interested in learning NFT development, what I just mentioned is enough. Next, you also need to learn some front-end development. Technically, an NFT just has a part on a server and a part on blockchain, but if you want your user to use your NFT, you will need to give it a front-end so that users can visualize the NFT and interact with it. For front-end web development, you need to learn four things. HTML, which is the structure of web pages, CSS for styling, JavaScript, that's what allow you to interact with the blockchain, connect to the wallet, and display blockchain data to users. And you will also need to learn a front-end framework to easily build a dynamic UI. There are a lot of front-end frameworks and a lot of them are great, but we need to be efficient and I recommend to focus on React, which is pretty much the standard in the industry. And once you know all of this, give yourself a nice pat in the back, but don't celebrate yet because there are quite a few other things you need to learn before you can call yourself an NFT developer. There are many different blockchains, and in theory, NFTs could be deployed to any of them. However, what we have seen so far with NFTs is that they are mostly deployed on the Ethereum blockchain. And beside this, a lot of blockchains are based on the Ethereum technology, that's what we call EVM-based blockchains. We have many examples of EVM blockchains like Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, etc. 
That's why you should focus on learning the Ethereum blockchain. In blockchain development, there is an important distinction to make. On the one hand, you have what we call blockchain core development. And on the other hand, you have what we call blockchain application development. Blockchain core development is about building the blockchain itself. These are the developers who created the software of Bitcoin or Ethereum, for example. This is quite complex and only a small elite of developers know how to do this. But that's okay because for NFTs, we don't need to do this. For NFTs, we build applications on top of the blockchain. So we will focus on the other part of blockchain development called blockchain application development. Even if you will not develop blockchain core technologies, you still need to understand the basics of how blockchain work, and especially Ethereum. You will need to learn a few things like the proof of work algorithm, what is the data structure of the Ethereum blockchain, what are public and private keys, how addresses are generated, and the two kind of addresses that exist on Ethereum, how a wallet work, so that's an external software that manages the private key of each user, what is a transaction and how you can change data inside Ethereum, and what is a smart contract. Once you know this, the next step is to focus on smart contract programming. Smart contracts are small programs that live in the blockchain. Usually, they are quite small, a few hundred to a few thousand lines of codes, rarely more. These programs are very different from normal programs. Once they are deployed, you cannot change the code. We say that the code is immutable. However, the data is not immutable. You can change it. Contrary to a normal program, it costs money to change the data of a smart contract. And the more complex the code, the more money it costs. That's why we always try to simplify the code of a smart contract to lower execution cost. That's called gas optimization. It also takes time to change the data of a contract because you need to mine a transaction, which takes about 15 seconds on Ethereum. With a smart contract, you can move money natively. This is why smart contracts are so powerful. With a normal program, you will have to integrate a payment service like PayPal or Stripe, but you need to have a permission to do this and you are constrained by the API. With a smart contract, you can write any logic you want for moving the money. You do what you want. In terms of security, it's almost impossible to hack the core blockchain protocol. That means if a transaction is sent to move money from an address to another one, it's impossible to hack this and change the recipient address. However, if there is a bug in the code of a smart contract, hackers can take advantage of this. That's why when you learn smart contract development, it's also very important to learn about smart contract security and how to write safe smart contracts. There are a couple of programming languages for smart contracts, but the most popular is called Solidity. The syntax of Solidity looks like JavaScript, but it's very misleading because the way it works is quite different. It's also much more limited compared to JavaScript, so we avoid to do things too complicated in Solidity. A great way to experiment with Solidity is to use Remix, an online IDE for Solidity. With Remix, you have nothing to install. You just load the website, and you can start writing and running Solidity smart contract right away. Remix is good to get started, but in a real life project, we usually use something a little bit more robust like Truffle or Hat Hat. Truffle is one of the most popular framework for Solidity smart contract. Even though nowadays another framework called Hat Hat start to be really popular. Truffle and Hat Hat are command line tools written in Node.js and you can install them easily with NPM. Both of them also come with a local blockchain network for development. A local blockchain network is very convenient for development because you can deploy your smart contract on a network completely separated from the real network of Ethereum that we call mainnet. On this local blockchain network, you can have infinite fake Ether, which means you can send as many transactions as you want, lose all the money, it doesn't matter at all. For Ethereum, there are also so-called public testnet that you can use to deploy your smart contract. Another useful tool is a blockchain explorer like Etherscan. With Etherscan, you can verify that the transaction was mined on the blockchain. Another service that you will probably use is Infra, which is an API that runs Ethereum clients for you. It's not easy to run an Ethereum client, so Infra is very useful when you want to send a transaction to mainnet. The last thing I haven't mentioned is testing. After you deploy a smart contract, you cannot modify its code. So it's very important that you test your smart contract before deployment. And with the Truffle or the Hat Hat framework, you can test your smart contracts easily. If you only have a smart contract on the blockchain, 
the only way to interact with it is with the command line. And that's not very user friendly. That's why we also need to build a front end to let our users interact with our smart contract. The smart contract plus the front end is what we call a DAP or a decentralized application. The front end can be a mobile app or a web app, but in most cases it's a web app. The web app of a DAP is 90% like your standard web application with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and optionally a front end framework like React. I told you before that you have to know the basics of web development before diving into blockchain development. Well, now you start to understand why. In your front end, there will be two challenges specific to the blockchain. First, the integration with the blockchain. For that, we use a JavaScript library called WebStreet. There is also another one called Ethers. And the other challenge for your DAP is the integration with the wallet. In DAPs, the user management is decentralized and users store their password themselves. We don't use passwords in DAP, but the closest equivalent would be what we call private keys. With private keys, user can sign a transaction, which is a data package that describes an action that a user wants to do with a signature that proves that the user really wanted to do this action. There are many wallets available for Ethereum, but most people use MetaMask. Learning blockchain development is probably what will take you the most time. And once you are comfortable with this, you can move on to the next part where we will finally deal with NFTs. As I mentioned before, there are two parts for NFTs, the on-chain part on the blockchain and the off-chain part on a server. For the on-chain part, you will need to create and deploy a smart contract. ERCs are a set of standards for Ethereum smart contracts. Some of these standards like ERC721, ERC755 or ERC20 define token standards. NFTs are represented either as an ERC721 token or as an ERC1155 token. ERC721 is a little bit more simple than ERC1155 and most NFTs use ERC721, but you still have to know both. ERC721 and ERC1155 only define the interface of the functions, but they don't define the, the implementation. You can create your own implementation from scratch, but it's not recommended. A better idea is to start from a standard implementation. For example, you can use OpenZeppelin, which is a popular library for Solidity that has implementations for a couple of token standards like ERC721 and ERC1155. The big advantage compared to starting from scratch is that OpenZeppelin has a safe implementation that has been audited by several security companies. This gives you a good guarantee that there won't be security issues with your smart contract. On top of the implementation of OpenZeppelin, you will probably add some custom code to fit the need of your NFT. Besides token standards, another useful piece of knowledge is how to publish your NFTs on different NFT marketplaces. The biggest NFT marketplace is OpenSea, so you probably want to get familiar with the technical documentation. Beside the on-chain part of your NFT, you also have an off-chain part. This is where you put the metadata of your NFT, especially the image. Your metadata server needs to return JSON objects with a specific format. You will find a specification of this JSON schema in the standard of ERC721. And beside this, one kind of NFTs that is becoming very popular is what we call generative art NFTs, where the image of the NFT is generated with code. That's why it can be interesting to do some research in this domain and check out some libraries that can be helpful for that, like p5.js. Now you know what you have to learn if you want to become an NFT developer. There are three steps. First, learn web development, then learn blockchain development, finally learn NFT development. I know it's tempting to skip some steps and try to create NFT directly without having all the prerequisite knowledge, but be aware that NFTs are built on a lot of other technologies and if you skip some steps, it's going to be very difficult to do a good job. So be patient and complete all the steps before you get started with NFT development. And if you are ready to start your journey from the beginning, I would recommend to continue with this video where you will learn how Ethereum works. I will see you there.